place is changing. You've broken down, haven't you? Yeah. This is unacceptable. This is the laggiest thing I've ever seen, and so is the gauge cluster. And it, and it never works properly. It just never works properly, James. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> Did you walk here? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. You've broken down. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the Range Rover broke down at the end of our filming day. All right, so let me get this straight. Despite our history with JLR, you've actually gone and bought a used one for us to live with. But I've been clever because this one is on a fresh engine. That just means it's on its second engine, Thomas. Yeah, I know. Which already has a check engine light. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And yes, I bought this LR4. Well, we bought this. Yeah, Thomas bought an old Land Rover. You approved For it. our long distance crew slash filming car. I ran it by you. But you said it was one of the most reliable years. It is. Okay. Yeah. I All mean, right. so, okay. How this, much was it? It was 30 grand. Canadian? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's already on its second engine. Yes. You see, I was smart. I thought this through. Because okay. as far as I can tell, this is the most perfect vehicle for us. Right. Okay? And it's the most perfect year of the most perfect vehicle for us. We have very specific uses on Throttle House. We needed a vehicle that Karsten could sit in the back, 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 third row to film. And we needed the window to go up. But we also needed the window to have a surround on it so it wasn't just bare glass. Because we had a vehicle where we had bare glass and it shattered. It was bad. It was bad. It injured Harrison. It exploded. And yeah, his it was, ears were ringing. It was really scary. We don't. We still know this day what happened. Anyway. Okay, so I'm sold on those two things. Yeah, yeah it, but the thing is, is that the earlier years of the LR4 had a V8, and that V8 was very temperamental. I thought the V8s had a, had a more like you know, naturally aspirated V8. No, 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 that's the previous V8 in the LR3. Okay. That's the 4.4. I'm talking about the 5 liter V8. Okay. Not reliable. What was wrong with them? The timing chains would fail and the engine would die. Right, okay. Yeah. And what happened to the previous engine of this one that's the six? The timing chain failed and the engine died. And long may that engine rest in peace. Now the beating heart of this 2016 LR4 is yet another supercharged V6 engine, but with barely 4,000 miles on it. And yes, it is brave to buy an older JLR product, but did not Hannibal exercise bravery when crossing the Alps? Did not the soldiers of World War II show courage in the face of evil when storming the beaches? We chose to go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Thomas. Yeah, okay. And if by accident we are misinterpreting bravery for stupidity, well, learn from us. Let us be your guinea pigs. And allow me to explain a little further why this is the choice I made unilaterally. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and enjoy the show. Okay, so just to recap, you're yeah. telling me that I'm driving a ticking time bomb at the moment. No, well, yeah, but we just reset the clock. <laughs> On the time bomb? Yeah. I guess that is the best... Best case scenario. Yeah, you want to be the beginning of the ticking. Yes, exactly. See, I've thought this through. Um, it is quite a good engine, though. It's a three-liter supercharged V6. You know, as I said, they went away from the five-liter V8. 340 horsepower. It's pretty substantial. That's not bad. That's right? not bad. And I, I, I like supercharged engines. And, yes. And Jag used to do these all the time. Yep. And they've, well, the Range Rovers now switched to that twin-turbo BMW unit. Yep. It's How a good it, engine. Yeah, but to be fair, the supercharged stuff, some of the supercharged cars we've driven recently, GT500, CT5 v Blackwing, are some of the yeah. worst fuel economy cars. This isn't much different. All right, what have we got? It's 13.7 uh, liters per 100 kilometers. It's not awesome. That's but you, not great. That's not that great, but you know what? That's not much different to my Ram. This is a six cylinder. 
Yes. And it's much smaller. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. This is the TV. Good point. All right, so in getting this car, we've just cost Throttle House much more in mileage. Yes. It moves this big lunk of steel pretty good. I, right? just, I just don't want to stress the engine, man. Like, yeah, no, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, no, fair enough. A third, third engine, this thing's going to do great, but we're, yeah. the, we're the second right and now. And full disclosure, there was actually a check engine light, which we cleared, and the codes were, uh, they were numerous and severe. This morning, he's talking about this, this morning. This morning we did this, yeah. That was um, real. That was real. Um, yeah, I think the codes we got were, uh, it was, it was running a bit rich. Um, so, yeah. And then we, anyway. But then we did open the engine bay. And, oh, right. <laughs> and there was a small rodent nest. Yes. It, it, it's been there for an indeterminate amount of time. Right on top of the engine. Yeah. Under where, the heat shield. Where there is a sensor. By the sensor. Yeah. So we don't know if that's the cause, but it hasn't come back on. So that's a good thing. That poor rodent. Yeah. That's a hot place to be. Yeah, how does it drive though? Uh, uh, the steering is incredibly light. It is very I light. I didn't expect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't feel... I can't really remember the old Range Rover now, but it, do, it feels... I, it, it feels old. It feels a bit old. Yeah, it's a bit old. Yeah. It's a bit old. It's got hydraulic steering. Yeah, there's, feed, there's feedback coming exactly. through. Exactly. But like, the ride is nice. The ride is good. And the, the, right? the steering is good for off-roading, right? You, you, don't, you want to... You want a little bit of You want to be thrown around. Yeah, yeah, but you also don't mind that it's light if you're going over like rocks. Exactly. Which we'll exactly. never do, but we could. But we could it's now. The we implication. Know <laughs> the implication. The implication. Of off-roading. Yes. We got all of the different off-road modes down here, right? It's all the classic ones. Grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, sand, different air suspension, ride heights and stuff. Never going to use never that. Never going to use I'm it. I'm never, ever going to use it. But you can. <laughs> but I can, and it's nice to know that it's there. Yeah, the ride's good. No, the ride is good. There's a nice, smooth power. It's all for filming. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the brake pedal's very linear. Oh, you come to a stop. It's absolutely perfectly smooth. Nice. Why nice. can't modern cars do that? I will say it doesn't do the other thing that modern cars do, which is put all the throttle in the top 10% of the pedal. Yes. So you feel like you've got the fastest car ever. Exactly. I have to... I have to you actually have to put your foot down. All the way down. To yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So it's easy to drive reasonably smoothly. Get goes. It does go. For now. And the more I drove it, the more I understood Thomas's decision. And he did say he looked at other three rows that had a rear window that opened, but this was the favorite. And I get it. Even the ride is smoother than something like the new Lexus GX we just tried. Thanks to Land Rover's integrated body on frame, it doesn't exhibit the same level of vibrations coming into the cabin. And that softness has its drawbacks, like it does not feel like an athlete in the corners. But overall, in order for there to be balance in the world, which in this case means something to counter the horrendous reliability, it kind of drives well enough to justify it. It feels good. You know what I mean? It feels yeah. ni instantly nice. Yeah. Yep. Well, we, you know what? We drove that old Range Rover and we were like, wow. Yeah. This is nice. Never going to buy one. It would be stupid. And then you did. And I immediately bought one a couple weeks later. And in fact, in order to not buy one of these, we did buy something before it. We did. Yeah. There you go. Nicely done. Nicely done. Good backup camera too, eh? Terrible. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. No, I know. Um, okay. So that right there is our pilot that we still own. Yeah, we bought a pilot. We, bought, we never we even bought told it. anyone that. Yeah, we bought this to We use. were ashamed. <laughs> you, you want to know why we're ashamed? Because honestly, it's kind of crap. It's really not that good of a vehicle for us. We wanted it to be good. We did. It, like it, it's it fulfilled the same requirements. The three row, the hatch that went up. Yeah, but then the, the glass exploded, the ride was crap, and it and it kept not starting. So Well well, first of all, there's a little bit of a pay difference. How much did you pay for this? It's like twelve grand. Twelve. Okay, so yeah, maybe a little bit more than that. That's a like, third of the price. The air conditioning wasn't even working when we came with it. It's got more mileage. The issue is And, that, and is to it, be fair, it's still on the same engine. <laughs> right, and then we're changing the, the, the bar here. I'm telling you that this is the move. <laughs> it's the move. But you know what else is the move? Is this. How cool does this look? I want you just to admit that you wanted an LR4. 
You, we did a video on Extra Throttle House recently picking our budget garage and you picked an LR3. I know you actually want one of these. You're was, using Throttle House as a vehicle to live out your dreams. Whatever, a mirror man. A mirror man. <laughs> I'm here to save no one and pay luxury tax. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I think that this is the, the last great looking discovery. It's called the Discovery 4 everywhere else, but it's an LR4 here. I don't know why. Yeah, that's that. a shame. I feel like, you know, everyone talks about the Tacomas, the, the Tacos. These are the Discos. The Discos. It's cool. But, and then the new one looks horrible. It's, <laughs> it's, it's awful looking. And this one is just, it's got the boxy shape. Boxy is back in baby i still this, I, I still associate great. this as you know gilet the the, the vest jackets and ber berets in like it, this is old money england <laughs> yeah oh, i see yeah i, it I is can't very identify much that. no it's just such a great looking i love the way it goes up i love the big piece of glass i love the styling of the rear yeah if the queen arrived in this today yeah you'd only be shocked because she's no longer alive <laughs> <laughs> but like it definitely looks like something you know, there's like a parade of jags and then this is the sort of one holding the, yeah or the, a range the, rover or a range rover yeah, yeah, but yeah. Th even then this was this was the cheap range rover right it was supposed to be the more accessible range uh no not really the range rover was the more luxurious land rover this is like the off-roady one and then that one is more like the the, the luxury They're version all off of they it. all do off-road stuff are we off yes. are we gonna off-road this well we now we know we can and that is 99% of the battle. You see that? I've been thinking. <laughs> it definitely looks better than the Pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pilot is just a sad looking vehicle. This is cool, man. Look at these lights. Oh, love it. Good blue, too. Good blue. What's, da, da, what's the name of the blue? Da, uh, da, uh, he, knows, he knows every other time. I don't know why he doesn't know this time. You bought this. You did this. I'll tell you what the name of the blue is. God. I didn't look it up. I have no idea. Na we'll Navy blue. Navy blue. Royal blue. Royal blue. <laughs> All right, we look at the interior because it is old. <laughs> ah, okay. Good slam, right? That's a great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's it, like a, it's like a G wagon thunk. Feels really good. Yeah, I I pick good cars. I know what I'm doing. Thomas, this had a check engine light, and it's on its second engine. This morning, I know. Um, okay, other than that. Actually, hold on. I want to back up for a second. I feel bad about the pilot. Um, I like pilots. I, I, we bought one because I like pilots. The, uh, that particular one has wronged me a couple times. Well, right? Yeah, we'll yeah like it didn't start, as I said. One of, the one of the entire fuse boxes shorted. The alarm kept going off in the middle of the night. It still keeps going off. Carson hasn't slept in months. <laughs> Unrelated. It's for sale, actually. Um, anyway. Screaming deal. Yeah, what do you think about the interior of this? It's of its time. 2016 is very, very recent. Oh yeah, God, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what, the last Range Rover we got in was 2010 or 11, and it felt yeah. like perfect. This, yeah. this is yeah. definitely on the later end. And, and I think, you know, when we're in this, I think about the Cayenne. Yeah. Because in my head, they're sort of the competitors for, for crew vehicle. We drove that old Cayenne. Yeah, it was no, 10 grand. It was so cheap. And it felt yeah. as modern as this. Yeah. So yeah, this could do with some updating. I don't know, I like the interiors of these, but it's- This is familiar. It's, this is still the same. Um, it's real slow. That is quite slow. It's pretty crappy, yeah. But this is the same aesthetic as new ones still. Kind of, kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. just definitely an older version of it, right? Yeah, look at that, you got a, you got a thingy there. There's another one down at the bottom. Not so bad, right? No, okay. it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, and this is the this is the Lux package. This is the luxury uh, one. What did you get for the Lux? Package? You get a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know one thing. I know. Um, oh, I do know. It's got the heated windscreen that uh, when you see it, you uh, can't the, unsee it. The filament. It's got the filament in it. Also, it has heated seats in the back and a special nicer leather package. This is 2016. Yeah, yes. I'm just thinking about like the F the F Type R came out 2015. Yeah. And that interior looked leagues ahead. And you reminded me because that also no. that also had the filament with the heated windshield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually don't mind. I don't mind that. Well, it's, in certain lights, you can't not see it, and it's a bit annoying. Yeah, but it heats it, which is good for winter. This it's is really this is currently handy. doing winter duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's it's this again. It's got all of this. It's got all this stuff. All the off road modes seats and are all comfy. Those things, it's got right? the stupid Land Rover thing where you twist this to yeah, where you, you want you it. You twist this to set the thing. It's a it's a dumb system, but it does work if you kind of get used to it. It's to get it hand. absolutely correct. You, you want that perfect level. For all that physical cruise. buttons because you're going to off road this. Heated steering wheel. 
Nice. Right? Not nice. bad. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. This is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, it makes it feel modern, you know? I mean, this is one of the things that the previous owner had to replace because it locked them in their driveway. It didn't come up when they started the car, so they had to bring Land Rover to the house to actually swap out the whole unit. Yeah. Heated seats in the back? Yep, heated seats in the back. It's part of the Lux package. Yeah. I remembered that as well. No, there's a lot of room in here. That's one of the main reasons that we did it, right? Careful, those break. <laughs> one of them already broke back there. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, well, this is one of those moments where you know we're almost spoiling the crew because this isn't something you and I are going to spend that much time. No, in. no. You know, they they tend to sit in realms of comfort while we are in like, like tofu, tofu and shit, shit, yeah, being destroyed. So yeah. So well, the idea with this is that like if we do a three thousand kilometer road trip, they don't have to suffer in a pilot. But they. I don't, mean, the pilot's great, and you should buy one, ours specifically. This isn't going to last 3,000 kilometers. It will, because again, we've reset the clock on the engine. I thought about this, right? I, listen, I, if, as long as it works, how, how's this, uh, how's this, is this Meridian? It's Meridian. This is upgraded sound system with the Lux package. How is it? That's another thing that I just remembered right now that comes with the luxury package. And? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine, yeah. <laughs> As long as this thing works, I love the idea of it. Isn't, isn't it cool? It drives well. It, it has an amazing door slam. Nice. It's it cool. looks good. It's got three sunroofs. That's two more than most cars. That's a lot of sunroofs. It is. That one in the back breaks often, though, so you have to be careful with it. And they're real expensive to fix. Well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Repairs for this are not going to be the same price as it repairs for a pilot. No. But, no. but we're starting with a reasonably clean slate. Yeah, but I mean, other than the fact that it's horrendously outdated, the backup camera sucks and the parking sensors don't work, it's actually quite modern feeling. I heard the lie coming out of your mouth yeah. there. Yeah. It's good. It's good. We should go to a conclusion now. Okay. Okay. Despite our jokes at the beginning and throughout, it does seem like Land Rover might be on an upward trend with reliability, and we've heard of new defenders covering fantastic distances with zero issues. But unfortunately, that newly forming reputation doesn't extend back to 2016, as immediately after this shoot, our LR4 started running really rough and threw some more codes. And after diagnosing it as damage to the high-pressure fuel pump, which is attached to the actual engine block, and after learning these engine codes were actually present immediately after the engine swap was completed at the dealer and never fully resolved, naturally, our requests for repairs to be done under the still currently active one-year engine warranty were flatly and categorically denied. Thank God. We would have been uncomfortable if a warranty was easily and unquestionably honored at a dealership. Anyway, Clarkson Fine Cars came through and fixed her up in a jiffy. So to make sure this doesn't happen again, please join us in a prayer. Our Land Rover, who art on the side of the road, hallowed be thy name, thy AAA come, thy engine replacement be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our extended warranty, and forgive us our purchases, as we forgive those who hold our purchases against us. And lead us not back to the dealership, but deliver us from check engine lights. For thine is the luxury off-roader, the supercharged power and glory, forever and ever, asterisk, Amen. Amen.